Hi everybody, and welcome back for another exciting week of Espanol. Um, this week we're moving on to chapter 9, capítulo 9, titled ¿Qué pasó? Uh, which literally means what happened, what happened. So hopefully the ambulance here will give you a little bit of a hint. We're going to talk about some emergency disasters and other vocabulary relating to that this week, as well as some general party routines and um, fun stuff there as well. One of our biggest learning objectives this week, though, is differentiating between the preterite and imperfect tenses in Spanish. So um, you've learned about the preterite and you've learned about the imperfect. Now we're going to talk about how to use each one and when it's appropriate to use each one. So that's kind of our, our biggest takeaway from today's lecture. So let's go ahead and move straight through these. Um, so as we go to our second slide here, you can see um, some of your vocab, which of course is always listed in the back of your textbook every week, but I always like to hit some of the highlights. Um, so you can see over here, it looks like we're having um, a graduation party. Felicitaciones por su graduación. Congratulations on your graduation. Over here, feliz 20 aniversario de boda. Happy 20th wedding anniversary. So a little wedding anniversary here. Um, you get some cool vocab in this chapter. Uh, like a piñata, I think we all know what those are. And falling out of the piñata, we have dulces, my favorite thing, um, candy. Up here we have some globos, some balloons. El grupo de música, a musical group. Um, over here there's a pastel, uh, a cake. And on top of the cake we have some velas, candles. There's champán, champagne. And bocadillos. Bocadillos are little, um, in most countries these would be called appetizers or like hors d'oeuvres. But um, specifically in Spain, they refer to this as um, a type of sandwich often served on a baguette. So, los bocadillos. Over here you have the invitación, the invitation, and los regalos, the presents. The guest, los invitados. And these people here are having a toast, brindar, they're going to toast. Okay. Um, and then, of course, over here, banderines are those um, streamers that are, you see there, the little orange thing here. Los banderines. So... Uh, of course, you have other related vocab as well, uh, which you can look at on your own time. Um, so, we talked about in past week direct object pronouns. So, what's a direct object pronoun? Well, hopefully you remember direct object pronouns are often translated as it or them. There are two ways to say it, lo or la. Lo would be it masculine. La would be it feminine. And then we have los and las. Los would be them plural masculine, and las would be them, in the plural form, uh, feminine. So, as we look at these, number one says, los usamos para decorar. So, we use them to decorate. Now, if you weren't paying close attention and you said, oh, use it to decorate, oh, it's a piñata, boom, done. Well, unfortunately, it says we use them to decorate, los. So, that means whatever our answer is has to be masculine plural as well. So, we use them to decorate, a better answer here might be los globos, some balloons. So we use them to decorate. They are globos. Okay. Um, look at number two. Lo comemos después de apagar las velas. We eat it after blowing out the candles. Well, I'm sure you can guess what that is. That would be a cake, el pastel. Okay, so I think you guys can do these. Um, one of the things you're going to have to do this week is practice using the preterite to um, ask and answer questions. So if you look at the example it gives you here, it talks about una serenata alguna vez. So have you participated in a serenade any certain time? Um, and this person says, si participé una vez. So they took participar, conjugated it in the two form, participaste, and answered in the I form, participé. Um, and then the student followed up with cuando, when, and this person said, oh, el 15 de abril. Um, so I'm going to try one of these for you here. Number four asks you, it gives you the statement, cenar en un restaurante para celebrar su cumpleaños. And then it asks you, cuál, which one? So if I were um, asking this, I would ask a person, celebraste en un restaurante, and then I'm not going to type out the rest because I'm out of room here, but celebraste en un restaurante para celebrar su cumpleaños. And I would answer and say, oh, sí, sí. Celebré en un restaurante para celebrar mi cumpleaños, blah, blah, blah. So, did you celebrate in a restaurant um, to celebrate your birthday? And, yep, we celebrated in a restaurant or we um, dined in a restaurant. And actually, I just realized 
Um, I've been using the verb celebrar. It asks you if you ate dinner. So, cenaste en un restaurante para celebrar su cumpleaños. Sorry, used the wrong verb there at the beginning. So, did you dine in a restaurant? Did you have dinner in a restaurant? Cenaste. And I would answer with C. Si. Cené en un restaurante para celebrar mi cumpleaños. And then if someone were to ask me which one, cuál, I would answer and say back, Cené, I ate dinner, in Bonefish para celebrar mi cumpleaños. Okay, so hopefully um, you get the picture of what you're doing here. The goal is to ask the question in the to form, did you do this? Your person's going to answer and say, yes, I did this. Um, and then you're going to follow up with the question here in parentheses, that interrogative word, and then answer that question as well. So it just gives you some conversation practice for that oral interview. A um, little bit more vocab practice. So number one says, mi hermana se casó con su novio. So my sister married um, her husband, her boyfriend, and tuvieron blank muy grande, and they had a blank that was very big. Um, so they got married and they had a wedding, una boda muy grande. They had a very big wedding. Or number five, terminé mis estudios en la universidad. I finished my studies in the university. Woohoo! Um, celebro mi blank hoy. I'm celebrating my blank today. If I just finished, I'm celebrating my graduación. Graduation. Okay. So, now as we begin to get into the preterite and the imperfect, there's already quite a bit that you know about these two things. Um, and I'm going to go through all of these rules here in just a moment for you. And at the end, I have a little summary page that you can screenshot to help you as you're doing your assignments. But um, typically with the imperfect, we translate this as used to or was or worrying. And what I mean by that, um, we used to do something. So when I was a kid, I used to ride my bike. That's the imperfect tense. Or... Um, Everybody was dancing and was singing at the party. That's the was or worrying. So if what you're saying in English often translates to used to or was or worrying, you tend to use the imperfect. Now, it's not great for you to directly translate every sentence in Spanish. That doesn't work as you get into your upper levels of Spanish. But um, for the purposes of you really get stuck and you're trying to decide between predator and perfect, it can be helpful in certain cases. So uh, we also use the imperfect to talk about um, habitual actions. So every Friday, I ate pizza. Todos los viernes yo comía la pizza. So uh, habitual actions and um, generally use the imperfect tense as well, as well as things that are translated as used to or was or worrying. You can also see down here below on number two, when you're talking about conditions of people or places in the past, you often use the imperfect. So, for example, se llamaba Laures. So, her name was Laures. Uh, typically, is the imperfect because we are describing a person. Usually, descriptions will be imperfect. Um, if you ever read a children's book in Spanish, which, as you know, generally start out as once upon a time, uh, that is also true in Spanish as well. It's typically the imperfect tense. Okay, um, here's an example of a description of a place using the imperfect. La sala estaba decorada con globos. The living room was decorated with balloons. Or ella tenía 15 años y era alta. She was 15 and she was tall. Um, so in this case, we're describing a person or a place we're giving background information to a story, and in all of these cases, we're going to use the imperfect tense. Okay, as far as the preterite goes, whereas the imperfect is often translated as was or worrying or used to, preterite conjugations typically end in ed. Okay, so walked, talked, entered, ordered, things that typically happened only one time. Preterite events typically have a specific beginning and a specific end. Um, and they're usually completed actions in the past, okay? 
So um, oftentimes as well, when you have a series of events in the past, they're all going to use the preterite. And here's an example of that. So él entró en el café. He entered in the café. Boom, done. Pidió un café con leche. He ordered a coffee with milk. Boom, done. Tomó. He drank it. Lo tomó. He drank it. Y le pagó al mesero. And he paid the waiter. So boom, boom, boom. They're all finished. He entered in the café, ordered a coffee with milk, drank it, and paid the waiter. Boom. All completed events. There's a clear beginning and a clear end. He entered and he paid. Done. Okay. So a series of events. We're using the preterite. Completed actions. We're using the preterite. Uh, narrating events in a storyline. We're using the preterite. Here's another example. Sandra cortó el pastel. She cut the cake. Y se lo sirvió a los invitados. And she served it to the guest. Boom. Done. Notice as well, we said selo here and not leslo. You may remember from last week, we cannot leslo. Okay, when you have le or les next to lo, la, los, or las, the le or les changes to se. So hopefully you remember that from last week. So here's just a little uh, general summary of predate versus imperfect. Um, and here's an example of how you can see some of these things in action. So el, el, perdón, ella se llamaba Fatima. Her name was Fatima. Y era muy guapa. She was very pretty. So why are we using the imperfect here? Hopefully you're saying description. Yeah, so descriptions of people are always the imperfect. We see here, llevaba un vestido rojo y estaba sentada en el sofá hablando con una amiga. So she was sitting, um in the sofa, talking with a friend, and she was wearing a red dress. So all of this is description, it's setting the scene. So her name, her appearance, those are descriptions. What she was wearing, that's a description. And she was seated in the sofa talking with a friend. Okay, all of these are kind of setting the scene for what's coming next. Me acerqué a ella, I got close to her. Ooh, okay, so that is a one-time event. We know we're, this is a completed action, so I got close to her. Le pedí bailar conmigo, I asked her to dance with me. Y aceptó, she accepted. Okay, so series of events, completed actions. I got close to her, boom, done. I asked her to dance with me, done. She accepted, done. And pasamos el resto de la noche hablando. Should we pass the rest of the evening talking? Al final de la noche le pedí su número de teléfono y me lo dio. So at the end of the night, I asked for her phone number, and she gave it to me. So all of these are completed actions. Boom, boom, boom. It all happened. It's completed. Okay. Here's some practice for you. Uh, we're going to do three and four on both of these activities. So let's start with the descriptions. It says, ya tener 30 años. So already she had 30 years. Is this going to be preterite or imperfect, and why? Good. It should be imperfect. Ya tenía cinco años. She already had 30 years. Um, in this case, because we're talking about a description. Um, you can also think about it as the preterite being a specific event that you know uh, specific details, whereas the imperfect you do not. So she was already 30 years old when? Well, we don't know. Okay. Take a look here at number four. Blank las siete de la tarde. It was seven o'clock in um, the evening. So, blank las siete de la tarde. I would have said noche there. It was seven at night, but whatever. Okay, so it was seven and the afternoon, okay? Um, so, if it was seven o'clock in the afternoon, I'm talking about time, and time is also a description, in which case we should use the imperfect. I should have eran, eran. Hopefully, you're getting these correct. Um, and as we look at these actions over here, these completed actions, number three on this side says, mis amigos gritar sorpresa. So my friends and my verb here, gritar, is to scream, and they screamed, sorpresa, surprise. So my friends screamed surprise. How many times did they scream surprise? Probably only once. So this is a preterite. It's a completed action. Mis amigos gritaron. They screamed. Uh, number four, mi novio me besar. My boyfriend, two or four me, kissed. Well, how many times did he kiss me? Probably only once. So besar is... Um, my verb, I'm taking off my AR. I'm going to conjugate it in the preterite because he kissed once. So mi novio me besó. Completed action. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing how these work. Um, the other really cool thing about preterite versus imperfect is you can use these to talk about actions that are in progress um, or interrupted, you might say, and then the interrupting action. So typically, 
Um, I always like to talk about horror movies when I talk about this in class. So uh, I don't know if you're a horror movie fan or not, but typically there's always a dumb blonde in every horror movie, right? And she always gets killed. So while the dumb blonde was walking down the street, the killer snatched her up. Okay, so while the dumb blonde was walking, we know that was or worrying is typically the imperfect tense. That is my ongoing action in the imperfect. So um, while the dumb blonde was walking down the street, imperfect tense, the killer snatched her. He only snatched her one time. So that's the preterite. It's a completed event. It's the interrupting action. So the killer snatching interrupted the dumb blonde's walking. Okay, so you can apply that logic to this same scenario here. So it says here, um, you're supposed to describe um, what these people were doing when Claudia's parents arrived. Okay, so I'm going to start this out with when, cuando. Um, so cuando los padres de Claudia llegaron a casa. So when Claudia's parents arrived home. And I'm going to talk about Tomas here because he's doing what I would have been doing. Tomas, so Thomas, um, estaba comiendo un sandwich. So, when Claudia's parents arrived, they only arrived one time, so this is in the preterite. When they arrived, Tomas estaba comiendo un sandwich. He was eating. So we have was or worrying here. So it's going to be the imperfect. Now, if you don't like estaba comiendo, you can always just use the verb comer and conjugate it in the imperfect to say Tomas comía un sandwich. So uh, when, his, when Claudia's parents arrived, Thomas was eating a sandwich. So arrived, ed, preterite, was or worrying, imperfect. Okay. And you can um, go through and write these differently. I could say that Simon y Claudia bailaban. So Simon and Claudia were dancing. Bailaban cuando los padres de Claudia llegaron. So they were dancing, was or worrying, imperfect whenever the parents arrived, llegaron, preterite. Okay, I think you can see how these work. Okay, so as we get into some more specific uses here of the preterite and the imperfect, um, when you have simultaneous actions, typically they're both going to be in the imperfect tense, okay? Uh, because they're both going on at the same time and they're both usually translated as was or worrying. So, él escuchaba mientras ella hablaba. So, he was listening while she was talking. Okay, both was or worrying. Or you might translate it, he listened while she spoke. But he was listening while she was talking. Or todos bailaban y cantaban. Everybody was dancing and was singing. Okay, so they're both happening at the same time. These are simultaneous actions. We know that when we're talking about a series of completed events in the past, we use the preterite tense. So, la señora Cisneros llevó el pastel a la mesa. She carried the cake to the table. Boom, done. Los niños cantaron las mañanitas. The children sang. Done. And después, Rosita abagó las velas. Rosita blew out the candles. Done. La señora cortó el pastel y se lo sirvió a los niños. The, the missus cut the cake and served it to the children. So, done. We carried the cake to the table. They sang, blew out the candles, cut the cake. So, boom, boom, boom. We have a series of um, completed events in the past. So, therefore, we are using the preterite tense. Okay? And then... I already told you about this. When one action is in progress and the other one begins, that's our ongoing and our interrupting action. Our ongoing action is typically in the imperfect tense, and our interrupting action is typically in the preterite tense. So, for example, Mientras terminábamos los, las preparaciones, los invitados empezaron a llegar. So, while we were finishing the preparations, notice was or worrying, imperfect, the guest began to arrive, okay? So they're arriving, interrupted our 
finishing the preparations. Uh, here's a funny one. Todos se, se divertían en la fiesta cuando llegó la policía. Everybody was having fun at the party when the police arrived, okay? Was or worrying, they were having fun when the police arrived one time. Okay, so you'll have some examples where you get to go through and analyze these this week. I found these pictures to be kind of amusing. So these sentences are basically the same. So in 1980, tuve un hijo. So in 1980, I had a kid. Or in 1980, tenía dos hijos. So in 1980, um, she had two children. So as you look here at the pictures, you can kind of see which one's different. Um, number one is a great example of letter B. In 1980, she had a child. This is talking about the childbirth that happened one time. Boom, complete it. Whereas number two in 1980, she used to have two children, or at that point in time, she had two children. Um, there's a picture here of a woman with two kids. So that's going to be option A. So you can kind of see how these are differently translated, though, just by changing one verb from the predator to the imperfect. Tuve un hijo, she had a child, referring to childbirth. Tenía dos hijos, she had two children. Okay, as we look at three and four, we see the same thing here. So, number three. Uh, mientras Sara hablaba por teléfono, tomaba café. So, while Sarah was talking on the phone, she was drinking coffee. Okay, so take a look at these, see which one you think it might be. Or number four. Mientras Susana hablaba por teléfono, le sirvieron un café. So while Susana was talking on the phone, they served her a coffee. So you can see, this is referring to two simultaneous actions, in which case we use both the imperfect. So while Sarah was talking on the phone, they served her a coffee. That's this picture here, picture A. Whereas number four, while Susana was talking on the phone, they served her a coffee. The serving of the coffee interrupted her talking on the phone. It's an ongoing versus an interrupting action. So we have picture B. Okay, the second part of your vocab for this chapter uh, refers, kind of gets into more of those uh, technical details about the accident and the title of our chapter, Que Paso. It starts to make sense while this chapter is titled Que Paso here. Uh, we have a lot of emergency room um, technology like El paramédico here, the paramedic. We have la ambulancia, an ambulance. La camilla, a stretcher. La patrulla, unfortunately this is referring to the patrol car and not the dog. La patrulla, uh, the patrol car. Um, up here we have la señal, a sign. El semáforo, which is a traffic light. And we have... El ciclista, the, the cyclist, a bike rider. These animales here have to cruzar la calle. They're crossing the street. And unfortunately, while they're crossing the street, um, this guy has to chocar con. He's colliding with. So you could say in this case, el ciclista chocó con los animales. He collided with the animals and he had a wreck. Um, and then here we have la acera, the sidewalk. I think that covers most of them. Again, you have some um, more vocabulary here that you can look at in your textbook and study, but those are all here for you. Um, in this case, you are just selecting the correct vocabulary word. So as we were looking at these, we have El policía me dio una blank por conducir a excesiva de velocidad. So the policeman, two or four me, gave a blank for driving above the speed limit. He gave me a patrol car or he gave me a ticket. Hopefully you're saying here he gave me una multa, a ticket. Okay. In this activity, you are getting an opportunity to actually go through and answer some of these questions. So number one, cuando conseguiste tu licencia de conducir. So when did you receive your driver's license? So I could say con Segui mi licencia de conducir cuando tenía diez y seis años. Sorry, my email's blowing up over there. Um, so, 
when did you receive your driver's license? I received my driver's license when I was 16. So when I was 16, my age, that's a description, that is the imperfect, but I received my driver's license only one time, so therefore that is the preterite. Um, another funny question here. Chocaste el coche de tus padres cuando estabas aprendiendo a conducir. Did you wreck your parents' car when you were learning how to drive? So, cuando estaba aprendiendo a conducir, choque, notice the verb chocar here, uh, verbs that end in car in the preterite, you learn that verbs that end in car change to que, verbs that end in gar change to ge, and verbs that end in zar change to se. So I'm going to say choque. La camioneta de mi padre. So when I was learning how to drive, estaba aprendiendo, was or were learning. I wrecked, choque, la camioneta de mi padre. I wrecked my dad's truck, which is true. I'm a horrible driver. Okay, so hopefully you can see here uh, these activities are trying to get you to understand usages of the preter and the imperfect and give you some opportunities to practice differentiating between those appropriate verbs. Okay, um, preterite imperfect also applies to emotions and to mental states, okay? So generally speaking, if you're talking about an ongoing action or an ongoing emotion, remember those are imperfect, whereas a sudden change is usually the preterite, um, and it's a one-time thing. So here's an example of an ongoing emotion versus a change in emotion. So, era un día bonito. It was a pretty day. Y ella se sentía feliz. So, it was pretty and she was happy, okay? Um, constant action, ongoing emotion. She was just so happy because it was such a pretty day. Whereas, cuando escuché la noticia, when I heard the news, me sentí mal. When I heard the news, I felt bad. Um, so, um, one is an ongoing action. It was such a pretty day and she was so happy. Just ongoing, no specific beginning or end. Just happy, happy, happy. Whereas down here, when I heard the news, I felt bad. It was the news that caused me to feel bad. The news changed my emotion and therefore made me feel bad. So it's going to be the preterite. Okay, uh, typically you have some verbs that generally always trigger the preterite because they're expressing a change in emotion like becoming angry, becoming frustrated, um, being surprised, becoming frightened or scared. So, um, me asusté cuando vi el accidente. So, I got scared or I became frightened whenever I saw the accident. Or, los testigos se alegraron cuando... Descubrieron que nadie estaba herido. So the witnesses became happy when they discovered that nobody was injured or hurt. Okay. All right, I think the rest of these you can kind of figure out on your own, not too bad. Uh, ponerse is often used whenever you're expressing a change in emotion. So, me puse nervioso, I got nervous. Me puse nervioso. Or the example your book gives here, cuando se murió mi perro, me puse triste. So, when my dog died, he only died once, so preterite. Me puse triste, I became sad. I became sad as a result of my dog's dying which is a change in emotion. So I was probably happy before when he was alive, and then me puse triste, I became sad. Preterite. It does tell you here that the verb sentirse is a stem changer. Um, so you notice instead of sentieron, you get se sintieron tristes. So my E changes to an I in the preterite. That's one of our preterite boot verbs we discussed before. Um, there are some verbs that change meaning as well when used in the preterite versus in the imperfect. So, for example, uh, the verb querer is an obvious one. Uh, in the preterite, uh, quise refers to something that you tried to do, whereas in the imperfect, quería refers to something you wanted to do. Uh, no quise is something that you might refuse to do in the preterite, whereas no quería is just something you didn't want to do. Same thing with the verb conocer. Uh, in the preterite, conocí, I met, preterite. But conocía, I didn't know. Or haber, in the preterite, 
hubo, un accidente, there was an accident, an accident occurred. Whereas había, there was or there were, more of a description. Um, so you can see those. You have some rema remaining practice activities here, and I'll go through just a couple of these for you. So number one, cuando vi el coche pasarse, el semáforo en rojo, yo blank. So when I saw the car pass through the red light, I blank. Either I was happy, that's unlikely. I was scared, okay, maybe. Me sorprendí, it surprised me. Or me puse triste, it made me sad. Or se enojó, okay, so a lot of these could be correct. You kind of have to read through the whole um, series here to figure out the correct answer, but um, I'm going to say that whenever I saw the car pass through the red light, that it surprised me. Me sorprendí. Okay. Whereas, cuando chocó con mi coche, yo blank, when it collided with my car, it scared me. Me asusté. Um, and number three, cuando vi el daño a mi coche, when I saw the, the danger or the, the damage to my car, I... Me puse triste. I was so sad. Me puse triste. Um, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, in this activity, you get to go through and use either the verb tener, to have, or estar, to be, to explain um, how this person might be feeling. So, number one, it tells you, se puso un suéter, guantes y un gorro. So, he put on a sweater, gloves, and a toboggan. So how's he feeling? He's cold, it sounds like to me. So you know that tener frío is the expression we learned back in Spanish 1 to say to have cold. To say he was cold, I'm going to say tenía frío. Tenía frío. Okay. Mientras conducía, escuchaba música. So while he was driving, he was listening to music. So how is he feeling? I think he's probably feliz or alegre. Ooh, feliz. So to say he was happy, that's a description of his emotion. It's an ongoing action. So it's going to be the imperfect. Estaba feliz. So here's a summary. This was that uh, screen I was telling you you could screenshot earlier. These are all of the various uses when you might use the preterite versus the imperfect. So remember, our preterite is usually translated as ed. Um, typically, our preterite reflects a completed action or a series of events. We use the preterite to talk about beginning and ending actions, changes of condition or emotion, and it's usually our interrupting action. So when the dumb blonde was walking down the street, the killer snatched her, okay? The killer snatching her interrupted her walking. So that is the interrupting action, the preterite. In the imperfect, we usually use this to refer to habitual actions. Every Friday, we used to go to the movies. Or actions with an unspecific beginning and end. So we used to watch Netflix. Well, when did we used to watch Netflix? I don't know. There's no beginning. There's no end. It's going to be imperfect. Uh, descriptions of physical or mental states. So I was tired, I was tall. Uh, time and date, it's 8 o'clock or um, it was Tuesday. Age, weather, childhood almost always uses the imperfect when I was a little kid. You, we used to go to the beach. And of course, these are translated as was or worrying. So screenshot this page, keep it for your reference, have that to study. Um, here's some examples. So Tenía una bicicleta roja cuando, so I used to have a red bike when era niña o fui niña. Used to have a red bike when I was a little girl. Era niña o fui niña. Well, you know, we just said that childhood is always imperfect, so you should be choosing era niña. Okay, number three. Ese día, that day, hacía mucho sol or hizo mucho sol. So that day, it was really sunny. Uh, with weather, you know, we also use the good, imperfect. So would you choose hacía or hizo? Good. You should be choosing hacía mucho sol. Okay. Um, you'll get to apply these in paragraph form as well. So 
Esta mañana, this morning, blank un accidente a las ocho y media. There was an accident. Oh gosh, or an accident occurred. This is going to be the preterite. Hubo un accidente. We know that uh, one-time events are usually the preterite, and it's a specific time. It tells us it was this morning. So this morning, there was an accident at 8.30. En ese momento, in that very moment, I caminar por la calle Montalvo con mi amiga Reina. So in that very moment, I walked on the street, or I was walking on the street. In that moment, I was walking. Caminaba. Oop, caminaba. If I can spell here and... I gotta center this box or it's gonna drive me crazy. Okay, so in that moment, I was walking down the street with my friend Reina, and all of a sudden, nosotros oír un ruido. We heard a noise. All of a sudden, de repente usually triggers the preterite. All of a sudden, we heard. How many times do we hear? Once. Oímos. We heard a noise. Oímos un ruido. Y. Ver que el coche acababa de chocar contra un árbol. And we saw that a car had just collided with a tree. Okay, so again, you can go through and decipher all of these being preterite or imperfect. All right, and then here at the end, you have a little bit of practice with being creative, which is something you'll get to do on your oral interview as well. Um, I'm going to pick a random one here. Number two, it says, ¿Cuándo conseguí la licencia de conducir? So, ¿Cuándo conseguí? When I obtained or when I got la licencia de conducir. When I got my driver's license, yo fui inmediatamente a Pals para... Comprar un té. All right, so when I obtained my driver's license, I went straight to Pals to get a tea. All right, so yo fui inmediatamente. I went is the preterite. Conseguí is also the preterite because I got my license once, and in that moment, I went immediately to Pals to get a tea. Okay, hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Again, please remember your summary page um, here of all of the preterite and imperfect various scenarios. This will help you as you're completing your assignments this week. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.